Hi everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. Scrapbookers, have you ever cut off these branding strips from your pattern papers only to throw them in the recycle bin? Well, I want you to stop doing that. Today I have a few tips and tricks for you on how to put these to use in your paper crafting projects. We'll start with simpler ideas and then we'll work our way up to more intricate ideas. So let's get started. Well, I said more intricate ideas. Honestly, they're just ideas that are take a little more time at the end of the video. So we'll get to that. In the meantime, let's take a look at branding strips in general. Now, some of them will have complete patterns on one side of the branding strip, and some of them will only have partial patterns. So I'm going to give you a few tips on each. And this is how I store my branding strips, just in a page protector, regular 8.5 by 11 page protector on a shelf. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using this white cardstock and these two black and white photos to demonstrate a lot of these techniques. Let's dive into this first technique, which is more functional than decorative. If you have scraps of pattern paper left over, you can use them to build a full 12 by 12 layout using these border strips that you either don't like or don't have any decoration to them. So when I have patterns, I cut them to equal a full 12 by 12 layout, I flip it over, and then on the back side, I use the ugly branding strips to glue my pages together and it creates one complete page again. You could also do this technique using six by six paper pads if you have a lot of those in your stash, you can create 12 by 12 layouts. Once you have your pattern papers blocked together into the size layout you like, you can always decorate them up with the branding strips that you do like. And here I'm just using a couple of different colors to add more pizzazz to this layout. Super simple idea. Now the rest of these first techniques are really just a variation on the same thing, but I wanted to highlight each one because sometimes once we have an idea, our brains kind of get stuck in that groove and have a hard time envisioning other ideas. So here I am using those branding strips as borders or edges to my entire layout. You can use one, two, three, vary it up however you like. You can put them tight together or spread them apart. Don't forget you can rotate the page and the borders can be uh, on the top and bottom or on the left and right. You can also use an L-shaped border and create a design that way. If you shift your borders inward on your page, you are now creating columns. And again, you can do tight columns, you can do loose columns, you can do multi-patterns of columns, and so on and so forth. So be sure that you're moving these pieces around on your backgrounds so that you can get lots of ideas. If you've saved up lots of branding strips, then this is a great way to make a block of stripes on your layout, and that is a great element to help anchor items to your page. Now here I am just doing it in the center of my page to anchor my photos, but of course you can always do it at the top or bottom of your page. You can do a tight uh, border of a block of stripes or a loose block of stripes. It's all up to you. Okay, now we're moving on to a few other ideas. Have you ever thought about using branding strips to create photo mats? Here I have my uh, three by four photo and you can get three strips out of a branding strip that's a full pattern and that will give you the edges to go all the way around three sides of your photo. So you will need more than one pattern of branding strip to create a full frame around your photo. And for larger photos like the 4x6, you'll get two edges done and then you'll need another branding strip to get the other two sides going. But if you save up your branding strips, you can mix and match patterns that uh, work well to coordinate with your layout design. And I actually prefer that uh, frame on the left that has lots of pattern around three sides with a solid foundation on the fourth side. And don't forget that as we go along, we can always mix and match and combine all these ideas together. So I've got a block of stripes and I've got my photo mats. So far, we've just been using the full branding strip designs, but what about those branding strips that only have partial designs? Again, you can use those as photo mats, or here you can, if you have a solid block of paper in the middle or photos in the middle, you can uh, divide these strips into portions and make them look like they stretch all the way across the page. So that is one idea, but here I'm going into using these strips to create banners. And I just cut a fishtail end to these banners where I slice up the center and then from each of the corners I slice into that central slice to get a nice even fishtail. 
And I will show you one more other way to do that here with the um, square punch. If you put your strip into the corner of the square punch, that can help you get a nice even fishtail as well. And remember, there are lots of ideas of how to use these banners. You can use them just at the top of a layout where they're hanging down, or you can uh, create opposite ends and let the bottom set of banners angle up. You can put these banners on curves and uh, you could do mixed and matched lengths of banners. There's so many ideas with these. Again, play with them. You could also staple these banners to your layouts and add more texture to them. And don't forget, you can mix and match your banners with the other styles we've shown before. So here they are mixed up with a column style. And here they are mixed up with the stripes uh, block style. Okay, let's take our strips to the next level. We are going to use border punches on these. Now you might think they're a little too narrow to do that. And while it does take a little dexterity to get there, it is possible. Most branding strips are about a half inch wide. Um, if you have branding strips that are slightly under, I would uh, use those for other techniques. So if you've got the full half inch wide branding strips, that's gonna work best. So I pulled out this scallop border punch that I have. I think it was from an older punch from Stampin' Up! It's been discontinued, but I'm sure you have something similar in your stash. And other many other border punches will work as well. On the back side, I am marking the halfway point and that will give me uh, an even design all the way across the border. Most punches will have some kind of central mark on them that you can line up that pencil mark with, and that will give you um, even, especially with scallops, you'll get you know the same size of scallop on the end of each side. And then I'm gonna show you a little tip here. I've got a pair of tweezers that are the reverse clamp tweezers. So you just clamp them in place and uh, leave them sitting there, and they will help you pull this paper through that punch so that you don't have to try and get your, your big fingers into tight spaces. So there is a very teeny tiny scallop border punch along with these teeny tiny uh, strips of pattern paper. So now you can put those to use in lots of different ways, all the same way we've talked about in terms of borders, photo frames, columns. You can stack the tiny scallop borders onto other strips too and layer them up. Let's make some embellishments with those strips next. So I'm gonna use these strips here that are the partial strips. They have, in fact, they have a border on them on each side um, and different brands will have different ways of doing this. Because this one is an uneven border, I am gonna trim it down both with my scissors on one side because it's a very um, slight border and then I'm gonna use my pattern paper to trim the other side and then I am ready to work with that. I'm just gonna turn these borders into more of those fishtail banners and then we're gonna put those fishtails to use um, in a way to make an embellishment. So I've got all of these uh, strips cut out and most of them are uneven. So for this first way, I'm going to go ahead and stack these strips up with the shortest strip on the bottom and the kind of in gradually ascending order so that I can trim them all to equal length. So once I've got this stack, I slip the tip of my scissors just under one strip of paper at a time and then clip it flush with that shortest strip and I just go one at a time until they're all the exact same length. And then we're ready to move on. So I'm gonna place these strips in a row of pattern that I like, and then I'm using this kind of smallish hole punch, and I'll put a link in the description if I can um, find what size that is. And I'm gonna punch holes into the ends of these pieces, and then I'm gonna thread a brad through those holes and fan out these pieces, and now I've got these burst elements. You can see you could do the bursts with all the same size pattern papers, or you can mix and match with staggered sizes of pattern papers. And these bursts can make fun borders and edges along with all the other techniques we've talked about. We are up to our final way, which is weaving. Now this, this one does take a little bit of time, but it's not super hard and um, just be patient and you can do it. I have got a mix of pattern papers here, just kind of everything that I've got left in my stash. Uh, because I have a lot of stripes and several icons, I am going ahead and offsetting those with stripe, icon, stripe, icon, both for these vertical pieces and for the pieces we're gonna use horizontally. I taped all of those pieces um, the vertical pieces to my table so that they can't shift and move on me. And then I am just going over, under, over, under with these horizontal papers. 
and then doing the opposite for the next horizontal paper and that creates this weave pattern. You've probably done this in projects as a kid, but they work perfectly and beautifully in your scrapbook projects as adults. So let me go ahead and fast forward through this weave project here. I You can do these tight and we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but here I am keeping a loose weave because I want to show you that you can do this um, weave pattern for an entire 12 by 12 background. Now these will stay fairly well together depending on the tightness of your weave so that you can pick them up and move them around and manipulate them. But here's a little trick. If you spread them out and get them lined up and then go ahead and put some washi tape on them, that will help them stay more as one block to give you a chance to move them around. Then you can flip it on the back and just adhere glue to each stripe and row. And when you flip it back over, you can tape it down and that wet liquid glue will give you a little bit of wiggle room to straighten everything out if it's crooked. So here is that tighter weave I was talking about, and these can be really fun, and especially because they're much easier to move around when they're tighter weaves, they won't uh, lose their shape as much on you. Then you can create these weaves into various photo mats or photo blocks or embellishment blocks, so on and so forth. So what when I created this tight weave, I did let two of my edges be even. I'm gonna put washi tape on both of those edges so that will allow me a little bit more security as I move this to my paper trimmer. And then I'm just gonna slice off those extra lengths, save them because you could do this uh, technique again with those extra pieces or use them on, on the other techniques that we've already talked about. So don't waste these pretty pieces of paper to the recycle bin. And again, you can just flip it over, put your glue on there, and then plop it down. And because, like I said, this one is a tighter weave, you can pick these up and move them around a lot more easily. And again, go ahead, mix and match. Put all of these ideas together into one lovely project. So that's it. Those are the 10 ways I am sharing to use branding strips. And of course, you could always do this with strips of pattern paper you cut yourself. But why not use these branding strips that you were going to throw away anyway? As we look at how I'm putting this together into a project, Go ahead and tell me if there's ways that you like to use your strips of pattern paper so that I can learn from you as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something useful out of this video. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up because that does help my channel. And I will be back on the first with a new cycle of videos for you starting with my counterfeit kit challenge build. So I hope you'll come back for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.